Hi everybody, I'm Bree the Plant Lady and today I am at a very special garden with a very special gardener. Hi, I'm Jennifer Petritz and this is my garden. It's uh, North Atlanta suburbs, it's Dunwoody it's, uh, Zone 8 um, and here it is. <laughs> well, I can't wait for you to see it. This is going to blow your mind. So let yeah. me turn this camera around. All right, so um, we are just standing here in front of in the front of my garden, and this house actually um, belonged to my parents. I've gardened here for 20 years, but we bought this house from my parents. This is the house I grew up in, so um, I know it really well. And the house faces north. We're kind of on the northeast side right now, looking um, looking at this black dragon behind me, Cryptomeria black dragon, which I was telling Bree. Um, used to be in an annual planting long ago when I had a different garden and we brought it with us in the pot from our old garden and uh, put it in the ground and it is huge now but I love it it's like an exclamation point love um, pointy tall pointy things in the garden so that's right now the Arkansas blue star Amsonia hubrechii this is a great plant. Looks great this time of year, but even better in the fall when it turns gold. It's one of our favorites. It's great texture too. It's that feathery kind of like fine texture. So great for mixing with larger leaved things. Okay, so one thing that Brie wanted me to point out is that we have recently installed these little thingies. There are these, um, solar powered deer repellents and I've only had them for a week but so far they seem to be working. We have a big deer problem in this neighborhood. We have a herd of about 15 deer that really never leave the neighborhood so um, they come through here and there's a lot of they like to browse hydrangea paniculatas a lot so um, so we have tried to dissuade them try to make them go somewhere else using these things and so far they seem to be working. We also spray um, and we mix up the sprays because I've heard that um, deer can get used to a certain spray and then it's not as effective. Right now we're using something called Deer Off. It's a minty smelling spray, so not as horrific smelling as like Bob X, but uh, it seems to be working so far. So we're, we're on that. And um, I do use a lot of self sowers in my garden. I'm really big on making sure all of the ground is covered with plants and not as much mulch. So there's a lot of perilla seedlings in here. Um, perilla is a plant that uh, I like. It can it can it can really kind of overwhelmingly seed an area. Though you can see it in the path here, where it's just like seeded into the gravel. Um, but it's easy to pull up. So I really like to use self seeders to kind of fill in gaps in the garden. And that's one of the ones I use a lot. I do, um, there's also Rose Campion, which is self seeded everywhere. I have Lunaria, that's another big self seeder, Columbine, all those to kind of fill in gaps in the garden. garden. Um, right now in full bloom is this Ito peony Bartzella. This is a cross between an herbaceous peony and a tree peony. Um, and this one is the one that just blooms the best for me. I have a three three other ones, but none. This, this is the only one blooming right now. And I love it with this Caesar's brother, Siberian iris. Caesar's brother, Siberian iris. That blue and the yellow go really well together. There's Baptisia blooming. Use a lot of burgundy in the garden, like the burgundy perilla. I love um, burgundy fennel too, it's a great. And then there's a burgundy smoke bush. So um, we, red foliage plants are kind of easy to overuse in a garden. If you use too many of them, it winds up looking a little dark and muddy, but they're great for adding depth and dimension to, um, to really colorful flower borders. So this is the reason why I bought the um, deer solar repellents. Um, this is Hydrangea paniculata quick fire and it's one of my favorites. Loves full sun, but as you can see, it's been nibbled on quite a bit, multiple times. Um, I put the 
little solar things in about a week ago and so far I'm starting to see some regrowth which I'm really happy for because this is a great hydrangea for full sun. I am president of the American Hydrangea Society so it's important to represent hydrangeas in my own home garden. Um, behind me is a burgundy leafed hydrangea aspera. That one is Plum Passion and uh, it's a really cool cool plant too. Um, more hydrangeas in the back because I have more shade in the back but I do have there's a another paniculata that one is vanilla strawberry over on that side. One of the things about this garden too is um, because this house is very symmetrical it's very um, it's very symmetrical um, it was important to me to make the garden maybe not be totally symmetrical but balanced so that is the reason for the more formal boxwood hedge and the um, zoysia lawn which is really not that big but I feel like it kind of neat my house needs sort of a resting space because there's so much going on that without you know a place to rest your eyes it could be maybe be chaotic so that is uh, that's that was part of my design thing and also I, I struggle with because this is the east side there's a lot more Sun over here that's the west side there's more shade because of the um, struggle with because this is the east side there's a lot more Sun over here that's the west side there's more shade because of the um, the um, Tupelo, which is Mrs. Sylvatica. Mrs. Sylvatica over here and then my neighbor's oaks. There's a lot more shade on this side. So I have to be kind of judicious about making sure that even though I'm not mirror imaging plants, that what I choose for that side can tolerate more shade. So that's a, that's a consideration. Okay, so we're standing in front of the front door right now and I just planted these two pots used to have um, hydrangea paniculata tree forms in them and a tree fell on one and crushed it so I only have the one so I've now moved that to the backyard and for the summer I found these cool Tibicina standards that I'm growing in here and hopefully I'm hopeful that they will bloom all summer long like this but they are just like bee magnets really beautiful um, violety purple color really like that color so this is kind of it started as a knot garden it's um, boxwood and um, berberis and then there's a couple of pineapple guavas that are supposed to be more of a silvery green color it's looking a little um, overgrown right now and I think we may take this out at some point in the future and do something different here but it's been pretty for the past you know 10 years or so but it's also one of those reminders that things in a garden, you know, you, gardens evolve and change over time and you can't be like completely married to one way of doing things because it's just at, at a certain point, the plants are going to outgrow the space and it's time to just move on and do something different. Um, I do have a lot of alliums in here. Alliums are um, one of my favorite kind of like splurge bulbs. Instead of doing tulips, I do a lot of alliums. They are not reliably perennial for me. I do get some to come back. They're usually a lot smaller. Um, but one of the things that I love about them is that the deer don't like them. So um, they are onion family. So they're not attractive to deer, which is great. Um, and they look kind of cool coming up with all the bearded iris and clematis. I forget who this one is. to use as many plants as humanly possible and cover as much ground with plants as possible. I have resorted to using them to cover my house and this is a climbing hydrangea that's on the house right now that is about to burst into bloom. It's already started to. It's um, Schizophragma hydrogenoides moonlight um, and there are hydrangeas about to bloom in here too and lilies. I love growing lilies with hydrangeas. Um, they help support the lily stems. I will, I still need to stake these, but uh, I love the lilies coming up through the hydrangeas. 
this is the north side of the house so it doesn't get full sun until you know around 1 1 30 in the day but it's it seems to be enough for lilies to do their thing and the hydrangeas love it so this is my husband's really into japanese maples we have a lot of japanese maples and this is one of our favorites for its spring color this is acer palmatum otaha um, and it is it is a looker it's really pretty in the fall too but, uh... okay so here we are on the driveway <laughs> my lovely driveway but i have this um like three foot ribbon between where the driveway ends and where my fence is and i've kind of turned it into it's not a huge space so i've kind of turned it into a quasi cottage garden there's um, a couple climbing roses that is uh, the generous gardener it's a david austin rose um you know not particularly prolific we did have to we put in this fence last fall and we did have to cut the roses down to ground level so this is what they've come out my dog's whining um so far but it's it's a good rose it, it's actually kind of shade tolerant because this does not get full sun all day but i've got a lot of um self-seeded digitalis in here um some that i planted the peach ones i tried to plant um alliums are in here penstemon lots of thelictrum thelictrum i go through plant obsessions like and two years ago i was obsessed with thelictrums this year it's epimediums um, but so there's a lot of thelictrums in here, lots of thelictrum in the back. It's also fun to say thelictrum. Um, yeah, so, and there's a big Annabelle hydrangea down at the, down at the corner. There's a camellia. There's, uh, oh, this is a cool, this is a Styrax. Um, I got this one from Durr actually, and I think it is Marley's Pink Weeping is this one, but it's a dwarf Styrax. One in the back is blooming. This one's not blooming yet. Not a super prolific bloomer, but I love the habit of it. It's really got kind of a cool habit. I, I, this is kind of my mess. Um, this is this is my project corner. And of course I have my soil cube here because this is the best thing to use when you're starting any garden project. Um, plants that I've picked up this past week at different garden fairs, things I'm propagating. This is kind of like the the messy thing and you know fortunately all my neighbors get to see it too because it's the end of my driveway um but this is you know this is where some of the magic that happens out there starts here and we'll show you the rest of the garden the back garden in the next video thanks so much for having me I'm you're so the best hostess here.